We're going to have a mandatory Zodiac lecture, and because it's mandatory, you must give your name and cabin number. 420 Stephen Sheila. 420, yep, gotcha. There's a number of things that we um, must talk about, and one of them is um, our landing guidelines, which also includes um, how we can uh, best um, find and, and get good viewing of wildlife, but not disturbing it how we can go ashore in polar bear country and uh, enjoy walks and do it safely. Places we hope to go and uh, talk to you about um, traveling in the Arctic because there's not a fixed plan. It's not like a bus tour in Europe where you can almost be 100% sure. It is an expedition and uh, one of the biggest factors will be ice. And I'm gonna show you an ice chart and then talk about the dynamics of ice. Here, things are a little bit different, maybe, to at home. Um, the, the landscape is more fragile. So if we avoid walking on really wet um, ground, it means we avoid damaging plant beds um, and the like. The terns and the skuas tend to defend a, uh, a territory around their nesting area, and they'll swoop down on you. As I said, if we are out for a walk, you'll always be with one of our guides. If we come into one of these areas, it's likely we're going to retrace our steps and take an alternate route. If the terns are dive bombing us, we're going to move away. Some people um, put their hand up and they wave their hand around. This is just going to agitate the birds more, so please don't do that. But they are swooping at your head, <laughs> so um, what you can do is you could just hold up your cap as an alternate target. Walking, we can see a really interesting behaviour of a bird pretending to have an injured wing and sort of it's leading you away from the area that it's um, where it's nesting when we're taking our walk we come to an area where they're grazing in our direction often we can get um, very nice views of them a whole lot of uh, bird life that's a great place to be um, if you're a fox because it's like a smorgasbord being at a, a, a bird nesting um, sometimes we can see them on ice sometimes in the water and there's a number of places where they haul out as a group. Um, we never know if they're always going to be at the places that we're familiar with, but we hope that we'll be able to see them hauled out. I know many of you have travelled widely and many of you have travelled into the Antarctic. The Antarctic seals are a lot more relaxed than the ones in the Arctic, and for a very good reason, because the polar bear is not a predator to mess with. The seals know that, they're nervous when they're hauled out on the ice and often they'll go into the water quickly if, um, if they perceive a presence of something else or not. I get excited every time I see a polar bear, I don't care how far away it is, I'm so fascinated by them and I'm guessing that some of you may be interested in seeing a polar bear, is that a reasonable assumption? Mm -hmm. That's right. Fantastic. Well, yeah. So, there's some things that you need to know to keep us safe and the things that I ask you to sort of buy in on to increase our possibilities of seeing bears because there's a good population of bears in Svalbard but they are not always walking around side on you know giving you the best profile you know sometimes they go to sleep sometimes they lie down behind a rock or a hummock of snow or ice and they're, they're just lying down if you think you see a polar bear let us, let us know and that uh, we can investigate further. Don't, we need to be careful when we're visiting places that have um, these historical remains. We ask you to be careful where you step. Please don't pick things up, don't move them. Certainly we can't take anything away. Have a fixed plan for the whole trip. Normally I discuss with the captain and we plan a day or two ahead. We know we want to see all the things that are on offer here in Svalbard, so we have lots of objectives and goals, but how far we go is partly going to be dependent on the ice. You'll have seen on the program we plan to visit New London, it's a place where we um, will go out for a walk if uh, things work out, and you'll, you'll hear me say this every time, I'm always going to be saying, we hope to do this, this is what we plan to do. It's, it's interesting because the ice chart is um, a good indication, but the ice is not fixed it's very dynamic. It doesn't always do exactly what you would think it would do. So, for example, 
This is showing you the archipelago, the islands of uh, Svalbard. The different colours, so white is clear water, and so is blue. The green, as the key tells us, is one to four tenths coverage of the water surface. And then going up in stages, so yellow is four to seven tenths of the water surface coverage. The darker, seven to nine. Red is, uh, is nine to ten tenths. And this grey is 100% of the water surface covered, fast ice, still attached fast to land. But we've had five days of northerly wind, and so the ice is coming down from the north. So our plan will be to come up into this uh, northwest corner and see what the actual ice conditions are like, because as soon as the ice chart is issued, it is out of date, because things are changing all of the time. We're certainly going to explore in Belsund, in Hornsund, and you can see that we can come up here between uh, Ejoya and Spitsbergen Island. And there's many things to see and do. Some things are best done from the ship, many things are best done from the Zodiac, and there's plenty of great walking opportunities. And if there's good snow um, up in the north, then snowshoeing is a, a, an option for some of you if you're interested in snowshoeing. So